all about two different moves and what I want what to do with which ones to pick. Which yeah, moves I want to hear those. Yeah. Uh, we are back. Hello, all. Uh, welcome back to Actual Play, the first playtest game of Sync to go on Twitch, the online. Um, thanks, everybody, for hanging out during our, our, our pause. We were getting some much-needed noms, and now we're finishing up character creation, and Andy had a question about moves, so what are you wondering? <laughs> Oh gosh, so I'm sitting here, of course, um, overthinking this because that is my specialty. <laughs> and You're experiencing some analyst bleed, I think. Mm. Every day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have, in addition to starting with the reprogram, I have picked delicate for sure, which is um, means you can see where other folks are sensitive because you're so sensitive. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm excited about that. And then I'd initially gone after freelancer um, because you just pick up. It's like, I'm interested in like the endless like gig economy and over like doing too much stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm also very torn because decipher uh, is pretty great. And that's the read people like you read um, data mm -hmm. uh, feeds and the like. So, mm -hmm. and I know that was what I had talked about initially being very excited about. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Those are difficult decisions. Yeah, my life is very my my life is hard. I guess it depends how much you want to role play the gig economy right away, or if you want like if you want to start out overwhelmed and working too much, or if you want to like work up to that. In a right. <laughs> right. Yeah. There, there's some there's something there's some moves that are like oh this makes me better at this this thing, and there's some moves that like essentially offer you the fictional right, the fictional position to do a thing you might not otherwise do. Like, like you have a pad that everybody goes to, or you, you're a freelancer that has, um, that has, you know, gigs. And I, I, I feel like if you feel like you need to have that move in order to have the fictional excuse for it or the fictional justification for it rather, then that makes sense. But it's also totally reasonable to say like you do freelance gigs. You don't necessarily have the move it doesn't like benefit you and cost you in the way that it does want until you get the move. But I think it's totally fine to like say that's a part of your character. Great. Even with, or or since it was like such a short game, you could just start with both of them and I wouldn't be sad. <laughs> <laughs> as long as everyone else thinks that's fair or if they, I don't, I don't know. If um, it's a really difficult decision, I don't want to, like if they both sound fun, I think it's silly to not let you have both of them. I don't fair know. enough. I, I think in the minute I'm going to go with decipher and then like that mm -hmm. freelance context can happen <laughs> later. Cause it's, there's a lot of benefits that come from that, that we'll, we'll, we'll get to there. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you all for talking through that with me. Mm -hmm. Frazier put it well, work up to working too hard. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Frazier. I feel that way when people ask me like, so what do you do? And I'm like, I do a million things. All the things. Hey, I, yeah. Kira. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Hey, Kara, can you um, go click on Zoom? Uh, yeah. This is this is going to be the fun game where we navigate through Zoom's audio. Can you click on the little right arrow that's next to stop video? Yeah, I'm there already with the audio section. Yes. Yeah, yeah go to audio. And do you mind, can your, can your mic get any more gain? Um, is it gained up? Input volume is all the way up. Okay. All right. Well then, uh, maybe I can turn it up on the mic itself. Like, does that help? At sure. All? If the if the mic up? has, yeah, if the mic's adjustable, or if you can is bring it, the mic closer. Is oh, it not loud enough on your end? I can hear it pretty it's well. It's loud enough, me. but uh, John was uh, commenting that it's quieter on stream. So how about mm. how about now? Maybe I just brought it closer to me. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Sean. You. For us now. Thank you, John. Mm hmm. Yes. So, so what did you choose again, Andy? You I went, I went ahead and went with decipher. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I have both decipher and delicate so I can read folks and have a sense of what they're on about and then dig deeper into that and see through people and reveal exploitable weaknesses. Yeah. Cool. So, nice. so if everyone is done with their character uh, creation, um, we can move into the second phase of character creation, which is reading, introducing your character one at a time, and then uh, making connections with those characters through your backstories. And then uh, we'll have an additional thing where we uh, create the collective, the reason that you're all together. 
So um, who would like to start their character description and intro first? Basically, you will read your name, your look, your cyber tech style, your origin, um, and then go to the moves page and read the moves that you chose um, and your sex move, because there's sex in this game. I sh rated our warning, I guess. Mature, you didn't. mature warning for this setting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there won't be any sex on screen. That sounds weird. Uh, this, I don't know. I'm going to stop. Who, who would like to go first? <laughs> Uh, Karen, do you want to go since you've had like the clearest picture so far? I think you've got all the things picked. Um, sure. Let me go back to it. Okay, so um, so my character's name is Lido. Uh, pronouns are he, him. Uh, he's got a very toned look. Uh, so definitely kind of just just slightly uh, bulked up in, in muscle. You know, just wearing shirts that are slightly too tight around the, the biceps. Yeah. Um, and cool nice. eyes. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty hot. Um, uh, Cybertech style, he's got a hot shit garage. Um, everything's all wireless for his car and he's got a remote car control so he can you know, start it up and then slide over the top and get in and go. Fast. Uh, and his, his origin is a uh, carjacker. Cool. Uh, is what he used to be doing, perhaps still does a little bit. And you said his name was Lido, like L I T. Lido, L E T O. Oh, because the first thing I thought of when you said that was Lido from Sensate, and I was like, okay. I thought yeah, of that too. That's what I thought of, too. Yeah. Of the the sound of it, but um, but I'm spelling it differently. But yeah. Yep, you totally are. Um, and it's funny because in my head, I've always when I when I've heard the name Lido. Um, at Sunset, I've always imagined it's spelled L-E-T-O because I didn't know how it was spelled at first. You know, uh -huh. you hear names and you just backfill it in your head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right. I, I love Lido so far. Um, so mm -hmm. then what are Lido's moves? What can he do? Uh, so his first move is Fast and Furious. Uh, my car is amazing. It can do uh, things that most other cars can't do. It looks super hot. Um, pretty hot. It's 360 maneuvering, which I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I imagine it means I can park extremely well. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's kind of uh, like Tokyo drifting, but like all the way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. I like the idea a lot that I can I can move in in every direction. Um, uh, I've got untraceable legal plates, ID codes, and slips, uh, which is super convenient and ethically fueled I haven't quite figured out how that is but i think yeah maybe something about water or like water filtration system cool. uh if we're talking about being by the coast and and also kind of um i don't know much about miami but if there are marshlands or wetlands uh, uh yeah, well there are in the future yes <laughs> there are now <laughs> the everglades have moved a bit south nice yeah. Uh, another move is get physical. So every time I can communicate something uh, without using words, I mark a connectivity point. So there's going to be a lot of meaningful looks and nods and uh, eye movement. And then far away, uh, if I can't deal with something, I just jump in my car and drive and heal a condition or make things worse <laughs> <laughs> or break down. Very cool. Before, wait, before we move on. Um... Mm -hmm. What is what does your car like look like? Like what color Ooh. is it? Like is it designer? Oh god! Or is it like a souped up old muscle car? Uh, like I oh, it's a little sporty car. It's a little Jaguar. Cool. Ooh. Um, it comfortably sits just two. <laughs> but nice. you could put a third one. It's got one of those little like bullshit back seats that you could technically put someone in or like a small purse because that's really what would fit there. And technically what, it has a back seat. What color is it? Um, it's going to be like a, a gunmetal gray. Cool. Kind of like a, like a shiny, um, slightly sparkly black gray. And is it decaled? <laughs> Sorry. Now fast it's the furious. Got, I, I feel like it's got a something. Um, I don't know. It's got one of those stickers that I never understand that has some letters and some acronym that I don't get. Cool. 
<laughs> you know? the, the fact that it's like the start. stone temple pilots logo but it means something else and you know it's a car thing and you don't know what it means he's got one of those excellent <laughs> yeah you can tell my car knowledge here i love it it's perfect yeah. That's about cool, my cool. car knowledge too. So. I what one more question again because I've been watching too much Fast and Furious. Um, <laughs> is there any <laughs> tricked out lighting on it, either under the hood, under the frame? Like, does it have? Does it? Is it oh, gunmetal? Yeah, or is it- it's got it's got red lighting underneath. Um, nice. But he can turn it off if he needs to. Yeah, if he needs to. Um, run. Sure. Uh, and all the all the lights inside are red too. Ooh. Cool. And is this a car? Is this like your dream car? Or is this just like you're just getting by with this one until you get the next one? Like how do you feel, I mean, feel about this car? I think I think he's very much attached to this car. He spent a lot of time on it. It it it's it means something to him. Cool. Um in in terms of just like how long he's had it and the and the work that he's put into it. He definitely um, tries to keep it clean and looking really nice. Cool. So he has uh, done the work. He hasn't paid. Yeah. To do it. Okay. Yeah. No, he's done the work on this car. Cool. So all this is really relevant for your sex move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so my sex move is unless it's in my car, <laughs> I get a minus one ongoing with the other person until I can prove that it's not like they own me or anything. If it's in my car, I get plus two ongoing. So somehow we make it work in the car with the non-existent backseat. Yep. I mean, I think in the car could be could be flexible. On the car might be reasonable too. <laughs> no. You figure it out. Leave the doors open. There's some more space. Leave the doors open. I feel yeah. Like as long as you're touching the car, the movie. Right. Open. I was just saying. Like he, the car knows, he knows exactly how to have sex in that car. It's very specific, and he's very particular about it, and that just makes things even more awkward. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then what is his? Uh, what's his glitch to move? Oh, I keep doing things to put more and more people in danger until there's some type of consequence. So I will jump bridges, slide under trucks, ask for way too much. Cool. Cool, cool. So, yeah, this character is pretty sexy. I'm yeah, feeling totally. it. <laughs> a it's lot. A sexy character, I agree. He's a sexy character. Yeah. It's very smoldering. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. Very smoldering. Okay. So, so that is our driver, Lido. Um, mm-hmm. Sean, do you want to go next? Yeah. yeah, sure. I'm going to pull up Tessa. Tessa. A designer she's uh she's a she her pronouns um she's got an eccentric look um i think it's like a mixture of of like overalls with like a tank on t- top underneath them like a real workers look like a real like i've been in a shop s- using a staple gun for mm-hmm. a long time and then a few a few mods to that a few a few jangly bits hanging off that are um, that are higher tech and or that are not seemingly immediately obvious what they're used for some some sort of accents to it um, in the same way that Karen has like random um, car people decals I think Tessa has some like random designer cool shit that like this was a limited edition print thing and you had to be super underground to even know what it was Ooh. and maybe she has the real thing or maybe she has a 3D printed replica of it who knows but like it's great. There's, a, there's a there's some like designer code stuff like stitched like patches stitched in and things like that um, it's like a less trendy Apple watch or something exactly yeah. um, mm-hmm. and uh uh, and she has arresting eyes. Uh, Tessa, once you do mm. make eye contact with it, it's hard to stop. Like she doesn't always look people directly, but once she does, it's 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 hard to look away from her. Mm. Um, and part of why she doesn't always always um, look at people directly is because she has those cool hypermedia glasses because the designer picture was way too rad not to steal those awesome looking glasses. <laughs> right off the cover so i was like yeah i totally have that it's almost Um, like uh she looks like grace jones but like in the future yes i was very much thinking of like grace jones but in the future Mm. yeah that's that's that is that is 
precisely my luck. Um, and she has high-end, beautiful gadgets, some of those things. Um, and they're, they're, her beautiful gadgets are all tools. They're not really useful to people that aren't in construction, right? Like, like a circular saw is real, real great for one thing. Uh, it's not really great for anything else. And she has a lot of tools that are very nice, but only useful for, for, for building. Um, cool. And finally, a hard drive of who's who. Um, I think, uh, because of a move that I'll describe shortly, uh, Tessa has a lot of people that have come in and out of her life, and um, and she's kept tabs on them in a um, in a friendly, collaborative -y way, but also in a um, like it's good to know it's good to know people. Um, it helps. So. Cool. Um, yeah, her origin is she's a furniture designer. And as we were kind of talking about before, her specific design focus is anti-design of uh, things that are made to inherently be less accessible to make them more accessible. Um, and uh, she kind of, I think it's a sort of a punk effort where she does installations in the middle of the night. Like she sneaks out and puts them there and then sneaks away because it's technically vandalism uh, what, she, what she does. It's like a um, yarn bomb, but for furniture. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I also think she has some. Um, I also think that she has some clients that commission her to do uh, real work because, for some reason, I have enough money to have a pad because I took that move. So, um, my moves are eye for design. I'm incredibly perceptive, um, and, and I have a HUD installed to help with design analysis, which. Um, allows me to design someone's by looking at someone's design choices i can determine a lot of things about them like their class or social group um so i can imagine some interesting reading of Lido, like specific choices regarding his car which could be fun um yes also uh, what is a hud sean a heads up display thank you yes uh, for people who may not know the lingo yeah yeah so i imagine that my heads up display comes in my super hyper media glasses because that's cool sure um, um or it can be installed not in your glasses because it's oh like installed, like into your like eye. in your brain in your eye yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool optical nerve i yeah. dig it that's useful for like when you need to weld and wearing your cool glasses is impractical yeah um <laughs> Although, oh, you know what? I'm thinking, okay, I'll, I'll think more. I think maybe not. I kind of like not having tech always available. I sort of like it when it's like, shit, give me that thing. So maybe oh. not. We'll see. Yeah, um, no, that makes sense. And that's totally fine if you just yeah. put it in the glasses. Yeah. yeah. Uh, handmade. Whenever I design something with in intention to shift culture, which is sort of, this is the move that sort of brought this character into focus, um, I can. Um, uh, I can get sync points if I do it really well, but also I might need validation to make myself feel like I actually made a difference. Um, or it might really wear me out or I might need to get wasted afterward. Um, so I'm looking forward to all of those seven to nine results. <laughs> They're the, good. the 10 yeah. results, uh, sure, whatever. <laughs> if it happens. Maybe I'll lower my rat actually. I think I might. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> The final move is my pad. Um, your pad is one of those places that every other creative rat congregates at. You're the only one with the income flow to support the space. If you invite people, you can trade. And this is where something's really interesting. So there's all these things I can trade with them. One of them is that if they're if they're pretty depressed, jump into your glitched. And my glitched is really antisocial. You're 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 pretty single-minded sometimes. You you need to get shit done. When you're pushed to extremes, you get downright selfish and terrible. Every interaction with another human being is a transaction. So it's very strange to me, and I look forward to seeing it in play, that if I have people over and it's all great, then it works well. But if they're depressed, then I turn into a jerk. So Yeah, because you're really sensitive. It's like their yeah. depression kind of rubs off on it you. Rubs off on me, yeah. And finally, my sex move is sex is give and take with you. You have a lot of it, and you're used to the ensuing game. Um, I can choose either that we both take plus one forward, that I take plus one forward, but they take minus one forward, or that they need to give me a gift. Yeah. So, um, pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah, I do. Negotiations and exchanges. Yeah, I do think they want to lower my rad and 
on something else though. <laughs> like, Remind me of the difference between tech and savvy. I'm sorry. You said uh, it before, but I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Savvy is kind of like your, your, your knowledge, your intelligence, your perception and observation abilities. Got it. And then tech is more specifically related to tech or something more technically minded. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. I think you read all your things. I think I did my things. I did them out of order, but that's okay. That is okay. Um, we'll get bit into bit. <laughs> bit by bit. Bit by bit. true. Oh, I see what you did there. Bit by bit. Um, you know, like bit, like bit things okay. computron uh, computron yeah. yeah um thank you the the pad will describe a little bit later because um it'll kind of be relevant to where you're living mm -hmm. i'm very much imagining um artist workspace with heavy doses of industrial added to it like big open space um but also lots of lots of machines um for building stuff that are cool that are powered and sparky and cool looking and not necessarily like um, dangerous, but not necessarily like safe to be partying around. And yet we do it anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we used to throw raves in our sculpture shop in college. I'm sure that was safe. <laughs> You're still here. I don't know why they let us do that. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So, so do you have machines to make so you're a furniture designer. Do you make like old fashioned furniture and like fix other people's furniture as like side jobs? Or do you only do like, um, like fancy 3D printing and like future machine type things? Uh, I really like older, I really like um, the idea of somebody who is sort of like a, um, sort of like a, a recycler junkyard scrounge that like picks up old picks up old stuff and refurnishes it and rebuilds it i'm sure there is like technical elements but i i want somebody who makes more or less individual items rather than something that can be like factory reproduced a bunch i think there's lots of that in existence and so tessa is um uh all our stuff is pretty pretty handcrafted like there might be tech involved but i think the aesthetic is more handcrafted old-fashioned right stuff. like she isn't the type of designer who will make like an exclusive run of 10 chairs each costing like 10 10 000 million dollars you know displayed in a gallery type of person she's more like she's she's hacking current or old designs yeah yeah and so there might be like there might be a set of chairs because she found four old ones and she wants to redo them. But in, in, in the end, they'd probably all look kind of different and they'd all have some sort of different, you know, they'd have the same frame, but have something each. Um, I'm not sure that I'm creative enough to think of the cool things, but that, but I imagine okay. my character is. Yeah, no, that's great. Great description. Cool. Okay. So I think you read all your moves. I think so. So that's our designer, Tessa. Good stuff. Um, and Andy, who are you playing? I am playing an analyst by the name of Nash. Cool. Yep. Nash is pronouns. I have been wiffly wobbling. Um, are she, her? And I for sure know that Nash has a shitty laptop and a phone. <laughs> Um, and a self-built data aggregator. For sure, I know that these are some pieces of tech that uh, Nash has gathered um, to uh, do the things that she does. Uh, Nash's look is energetic, uh, and she's got stressed eyes. So this might be a lot of coffee going on, hard to say. <laughs> um, and that origin is, is a freelance consultant. Cool. So there's those basics. So she's got like a, a lot of old cheap tech that doesn't work very well. Correct. Yeah. It just, I imagine like some, like I can well imagine somebody who's like, uh, like there's five laptops in the corner and like they all can maybe do one of the things or they're like daisy chains or running like part of the, an aggregator, right? Like just like the one laptop can do that one thing. 
And then like this little bippy box, if I plug it into this one, like sure. then I can expand some of that capability and go on to do this thing. And it's, it's so real too, because we, we <laughs> like all have like really old machines that are like just limping along and they have that one program installed that you're like, I could never reinstall it. If that, if I ever have to reinstall it, the machine is just going to die, but it's, it's, it's there. I don't have the original media to install it anywhere else. So I keep that one laptop for that one, that one thing. Yeah. <laughs> So good. I'm yeah. so in there. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. And then you said right uh, you said her look was displaced or awkward. Um, so energetic and then stressed eyes. Oh. Mm. So okay. I was looking at a different thing, my bad. Mm-hmm. That's all good. Uh and so I have an imagining this uh that Nash is relatively like in motion a lot and touches people a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and is relatively like out, not necessarily avidly outgoing, but maybe. Uh, and then is also like, there's always something going on, uh, like somewhere back here, and that I feel like shines through in uh, her gaze. Cool. What kind of clothes does she wear? Oh my gosh. Um, half of the time she's probably not paying attention, and like looks like she gloriously rolled out of bed. Um, and that. <laughs> Is probably I, go ahead. I like the gloriously. It's very specific. Yeah, yeah. I woke up like this. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and so I have an imagining that there's a lot of like fantastic bedhead, um, and like joggers and maybe like worn down sneaks, uh, trainers, um, oversized t-shirts, tank tops, and then like some real good jacket. They like designer joggers, so they're joggers, but they're also like a fake leather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, like yes. they're 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 not a fabric that you would jog. Yeah. Exactly. Correct. Nice. I love it. I love it, it. it. It would be inappropriate. That's not what they're for. She does wear designer bits. Oh God, they're like Justin Bieber joggers. I love it. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Getting the Bieber aesthetic. Yes. So Here good. we go. Also, I just want to say I like. I applaud and support you for making the like, I, I, I heard you hesitate, hey, hesitate there. You're like, she's outwardly, she's outgoing and engaging in people. And I'm, and I'm like, yep. <laughs> I know you're making a jump, but I'm. Thank so- you. Thank you for that. Yeah. That's a, yeah. So I imagine that uh, she looks kind of stylish, but in a sort of a diffident way. Right. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I imagine she reads very young. Mm. based on like the way the, this like particular like clothing codes and that sort of like rumpled um mm-hmm. half awake feels very college student to me Ooh, yeah mm-hmm. like yeah like i just got to class i just rolled out of bed getting to class or I someone else's them. bed yeah yeah totally i should have said uh actually you are all in your 20s oh so great you, you could be in college if you want to um Great. Why? Yeah, that could well be a thing. Like yeah, half. Be well, why you have to run so many gigs? Right, <laughs> not and very, not very well. Okay. And the idea that yeah, like maybe not real into college, right? Because yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. helpful. Who can you afford also, that? You can also be like post college. You know, I don't know how to work. Like that's. <laughs> that's real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just for a little while in your twenties, being like, "What the hell am I going to do with uh, this degree I just got?" Or what? Right. How do I work in general because I haven't what, worked this much before. What like, does it mean to to survive capitalism? Go. Yeah. So much. Uh, so that all being said, um, Nash. So I still. I'll, pick some other piece of cybertech style at some juncture but i feel like we have a general idea of like old crappy stuff jury rigged um we'll go from there and then and it all does stuff it's not supposed to do right like misusing technology to do things it's not supposed to be able to do was a, a, i think a big part of what she's going on absolutely so and then the three moves that i picked i picked so it's we start with reprogram uh, for the analyst. So when you want to reprogram something's coding, real tech on a 10 plus, you do it with no consequences. When you get a middling response, um, either the person's like all wrung out or someone noticed, uh, or it's a temporary effect. So there's definitely the ability to go metal uh, and see what new friends you make along the way. Yeah. 
uh, and then real important to me in talking about the analyst was I went with the cipher, which is you can read people uh, and derive meaning out of uh, what they're wearing, where they're from, how they carry themselves. Um, and so you understand the context from which they come from or exist in. And then to extend that idea, I picked delicate, which is, I love the, 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 like verbiage on this is you're delicate because you're so sensitive. It means you can also see where other people are sensitive. And then from talking about being sensitive, we talk about um, you can see right through people to exploit their weaknesses. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and then it, it, either you succeed in uh, learning something about some learning something about someone so that you can take advantage of that. Uh, or you could perhaps succeed at cost to yourself and be glitched, or you actually learn something about them that isn't exploitable. You just know more about them, sort of deal. Yeah. yeah. So being nosy. Yep. Yeah. Delicate. So delicate. Getting into people's business. <laughs> yeah. Um, no reason. I, I like that we have characters that have good reasons to get into other people's business a lot. This yeah. Is good. Absolutely. It's a good skill in the cyberpunk future. It's going to be real good. Uh, then Nash's sex move. I love this. I'm very excited. Sex is just another gig to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're welcome. <laughs> All in a day's work. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so uh, on a success, you keep your lover happy uh, with the middling. You keep them happy, but like you lose a gig or like you give them something that they that you had wanted or like you lose money out on out on them so it's a, a poorly implemented gig you do, or you uh on a real good day you fucking blow it I'm real excited about that one failing <laughs> so excited to fail <laughs> yeah some of these moves are real real compelling to get bad results on mm-hmm. yes i'm so excited to fuck it up <laughs> i love it. i love playing to lose in games you might see it a little bit in my designs <laughs> super <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which basically, if you don't know what playing to lose means, basically like, uh, you know, having fun with character failure and telling telling more interesting stories because your character might not be doing the best. I think that's really fun. Yes, I uh, I want to go play in that corner very, very much. Yeah. So the other thing we might want to know about Nash is uh, when she's glitched. So you're good at seeing patterns and now you're paranoid uh, that you see too many. And so like, it's a like a paphenia and a paranoia sort of aspect um in bodies a lot of like you can't necessarily trust yourself about the formations and the connections that you're seeing and then you get out of that when someone says that they trust you oh yeah feelings feels it's really sweet yeah cool i think that's all your stuff um near as i can tell yeah for the analyst uh for so for analyst nash so very cool. So we've got Leto, Tessa, and Nash as our characters. So the next step, now that you now all know who each other are, um, you will do your backstories, which mm-hmm. um, is basically how you're connected to each other. Um, so we'll start with Karen. You, you started it, I think. So, all right. Cool. Yeah. Do your, do your backstories. I think you... Cool. Um, someone's been on the road, been with you on the road for days. Oh man. Who is that? Um I'm gonna say Tessa. Cool. And I feel like uh as a favor, basically we used my car to haul very tiny pieces of furniture because he has a small car. Yeah. Um, but was asked to help move things around for installations. And this is very much like uh Lido owed tessa one already so this is repaying a favor sure uh, that maybe he had to do we had to do an installation and tessa needed a ride and she just brought with her her tools that are fairly small and so mm-hmm. like you could bring her out because i think tessa would also be like and can you hold this up and there might have been some pretty hot shots of like like as they're constructing something on site um, yeah and and it know, was it was a road like, trip you yeah. know, it was like a two-day drive somewhere. Um, or maybe, no, because it would be in the area. It was just like multiple trips. So it's like on the road for days in that we had to keep going back to, uh, to deliver more things. And each day it was building like another stage of stuff. So, cool. so like, how did this make you two feel about each other? Like what it, 
what happened or what did you learn or something, you know, what's, what's the dominant emotion after that happened? <laughs> Lito was definitely annoyingly particular about how to store things in his car. Um, <laughs> he, he has like, um, like netting in the trunk to keep things from rolling around. And so just like packing up the car took forever every day as he wanted to make sure that everything was secure. Cool. And, uh, and then what, yeah, what did- nothing. Hmm? Okay. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, like nothing. Nothing rolls around in his car. It's all very strapped right. down. Everything is like strapped down. That's hot. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> it's also um, like, what can you even fit in that car? You know, <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, Tessa was. I think. I think there's like the two. I think Tessa had frustration that bubbled into. Um, uh fascination like how can you be like this like dainty about things and um and 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 particular about things because Mm -hmm. i mean like she would duct tape things to the back of the car to fit more on if lito would allow her which i'm sure was like never an option (laughs) um but but i think i think the question would be like when we actually got to this is a question to you, Karen, it's like when we actually got mm-hmm. to the installation and it would involve like physical labor and doing work and holding things up, was Lido as particular about that as when we got away from the car, was he more like willing to be a little bit rougher as needed? Oh, a hundred percent. Like definitely yeah. willing to get dirty and, and, you know, hold things up over his head and, and do, you know, like Arnold presses and like really show off his, yeah. his, his biceps. Yeah, this is a fun show. Like he's like, yeah, yeah. So I, th- I think it was pretty hot then. I, I mean, I feel like, yeah. the, I think it started I mean, as like frustration and it turned into pretty steamy. I think he was definitely, you know, he's one of those people that like once he goes to work is just like, a workhorse of like, yeah, just like show me where to hold up the thing and I'll hold up the thing and I'll, I'll, you know, run and get the other tool and like very helpful and on top of stuff, but just like needs direction. That's awesome. (laughs) So was, was very helpful and useful. And, but then you notice like, as you come back into the car and like, everyone's like sweaty and dusty and whatever, the next day the car is pristine clean again. Cause he goes home and immediately (laughs) vacuums the entire thing out. (laughs) Yep. Right. I, I love this. Um, yeah, there was a moment. So many faces. <laughs> there was a moment where Tessa had um, some sawdust in a fold of her overalls that when mm-hmm. she sat, she saw the sawdust like get onto the leather and she just mm-hmm. like left it. So that the next yeah. time she could see that it was completely gone. Like she'd it let it gone. like fall into the crack between the seats. It's really, really hard to get into. And like oh, yeah. the next he time got she got into this car, she like looked down and saw that it was totally cleaned out. I don't know how you got in there. I don't know how you cleaned that little tiny crack, but you did. He, you know, it's. I think part of his sweet garage is just having like all these amazing uh, tool cleaning tools, high powered vacuum cleaner. Yeah, he details his car just constantly. So, super love it. Okay, cool. So that was your first backstory. Yeah, and then uh, the other one. Does does backstory have a mechanical effect? You don't get points um i can't figure this out so this is a play testing thing if you can think of cool. something to mechanically connect this to let me know cool yeah there's no uh, strings or anything and then we we share an x with someone and i i think um if that's okay um andy i think that would be nash for sure totally like you two dated every, every- or you share an x with them Nash uh, is that, the- that Tessa and I both dated Nash. <laughs> is that a, is that okay? It's so good. I'm very okay. into this. Tessa, oh, the- yeah. Tessa? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. I, I was trying to figure out which way it went. It's all good any which way, but, but <laughs> yeah, because you, you share an X with you. someone here. So, and with yeah. a three person game, that's a very small <laughs> triangle. Perfect. It, it could be it's an a perfect NPC. size triangle. It could be an NPC, but, but I, I like that. Eh. No, I, yeah, I love absolutely. very inward facing games. So that's, yeah, no, that's great. Mm-hmm. It's great. Both dated. So how? So I guess you're both on good terms with her, but like, I, how, how yeah. do you both feel about it? I guess is the question. Yeah, I don't think Ludo has ever talked about it. I think. Uh, <laughs> 
Tessa talks about it all the time. Um, <laughs> I, th- I think, I, th- I, think um, I think Tessa like makes references to Nash whenever Nash isn't around, and like mm-hmm. um, it's like you remember that way that like she she licks your ear, and like Lido just like doesn't. <laughs> say anything i'm sorry if i'm getting too specific uh please feel free to excard me but i think i think um i don't think it's like pining at all a Mm -hmm. but it's a fond memory and um and yeah and she's kind of tries to elicit that and if i think it's just fun to see if leader doesn't I don't know what leader's response leader doesn't doesn't acknowledge i absolutely imagine that the way leader dates is just start seeing somebody more and more frequently and then eventually starts ghosting them and yeah. the person is like were we were we dating are we bro- are we broken up now he's not great but, at the communication part but he's like still like he might he, you know he's still friendly but now suddenly it's like were we dating <laughs> like you don't like like maybe you know you don't realize that it was happening until suddenly it's not happening you're like i'm not seeing you or like having sex with you anymore when did how did that happen and it's like so gradual that he like fades in and then fades out of relationships oh poor boy yeah so in his mind he might not have even really thought of it as one i'm so into this he's extreme he, he confuses everybody he gives horribly mixed signals such it's, such a bad person to, to nice. get involved with. That's on, that's on fire. So yeah, yeah. So. I think that's why Tess is really really hot for Lido after this last trip. Yes, oh. <laughs> she like won't drop it. She's like, I could no. get I could get this on again. And so how well, no, that- I don't. Tessa and Lido didn't have a thing. No, we we Lido both Nash had did. Nash, but after talking about Nash with Lido and him not saying anything, now Tess is now Tess is interested. <laughs> I did it the oh, other way funny. where you had both dated Tessa as opposed to, it sounds like Lido and Tessa had both dated Nash. Yeah, yes. that's what I understood. Okay, mm-hmm. my mistake. But like dated? Right. For Lido, it's hard to say. <laughs> sure. We Yeah, there was definitely a time where, where Lido and Nash were um, seeing a lot of each other and then Lido just started ghosting. Rude. And I know, not- extremely rude. <laughs> There's no good explanation for it. <laughs> I cannot defend those actions. Terrible. So okay. Good. So so those are both your backgrounds, I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Unless we, and Nash, did you have any, Claire of Nash, do you, how, does, does Nash have feelings that you want to express? Oh, or gosh. Is this, you want to do it in play? I, I'm, I'm good in the minute. I, I'm, I'm real excited to, to find out. I think the the thing I know in the minute is that Nash is still at a lot of Tessa's parties. Yeah. I think that's the, the one thing I know for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe I, uh, like I have a key. Mm, cool. That, fe- that, feels, that feels like a thing. Maybe. Uh, I if think, there's such a thing as a key. I think w- there's definitely a key. And it's one of those keys that are, you know, do not duplicate. You cannot make. But Tessa's totally figured out how to machine one. Yeah. So she just fucking makes them all the time. And <laughs> she gives them out and does not know where they all are. Uh, so cool. every time someone is close to her, they might get a key to the pad. That might mean that she has to redo all the locks some, every once in a while yeah. when she realizes, oh shit, that person still has one. Six but, month cycle. Yeah, right. But that's okay. Which also means the landlord doesn't have a key to the place anymore, which can get awkward. So every time the landlord shows up, she's real, real keen to be there to let them in so they don't realize their key doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Um, Excellent. <laughs> cool. Cool. Okay. So should we move on to Tessa's background? Yeah. What's that like? Uh, sure. I didn't, I didn't make a spot for it on my sheet, but I will read it. Oh, my backgrounds are fun. Someone here is your friend. I'm going to read them all because they're so short. And I think they, they play with, with all each other. Someone here is your friend. Someone here is your lover. Someone here is in love with you. Yay. Okay. These are all fun. And because of a different game that I'm playing with, Andy, this is a real fun twist that I get to have now. So I'm going to do them in reverse. <laughs> Someone I, here is in love with me, and I think it's Nash. It's totally <laughs> Nash is in love with Tessa. Perfect. If that's okay. Yes, so okay. much. <laughs> okay. I'm so happy. You get to see that shoe on the other foot. Finally. <laughs> um, someone here is your lover. Um, I mean, in a real casual way, I think. I think there was probably sex that was had on this road trip. 
I, I like it, if 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 that sounds okay to you, Karen. That, that I we- yeah, I think I I could say it 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 happened. Yeah, and in a, in a very Lido way, it just kind of happened, and then pa- passive voice then was over. It happened, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think Lido is my lover in the sense that we just had sex recently. And that's mm-hmm. still like, I remember that. Mm-hmm. I have not in the sense that I expect it to necessarily continue. Um, yeah. But what is true is I think Lido is my friend. That I feel like is true. Like, yeah, I, cool. like lover status come and go maybe, but I definitely feel like that trip was, Lido might've said like, I owe you a favor, but I feel like it's, we keep on finding ways that we owe each other favors and there's mm-hmm. not, you know, that isn't, we keep finding reasons to have re- to owe each other favors too. So I think we're definitely friends in a real, in a realer sense or in a more permanent sense than cool. we are lovers. Sex was had. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely <laughs> done. I love it. Okay, cool. This is a complicated love triangle that I wasn't expecting. <laughs> And it's really I know, all your characters are super sexy. <laughs> Kira, I'm uh, pretty sure. No, it's true. I don't think all of them have like the love connections though. So it's really interesting uh, that this mm-hmm. is happening in particular right now. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, and then Andy. Yeah. What are so, your backgrounds? So the two backstories that Nash has is you face down a big name brand uh, to get someone out of a fix, and then someone knows about your dubious past. And I am kind of interested in, like, I can see where it plays in very nicely to have gotten, um, I love the idea that uh, Nash got Tessa out of a big name brand kerfuffle in relationship to all this uh, mm, public space hacking that's going on and, like, accessibility hacking. Yeah, I think Tessa has to keep her like has to keep that real distant from she can't be i mean it's illegal for one but also like she has some clients and whatnot that she has to keep too so it's it has to be very much on the dl for her so yeah so i think and like when i think about face down a big name brand i like i don't know if that's um like reprogramming some like some of their production line stuff like having hack stuff or like they were like i'm not sure exactly what that means to have done it Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. I I, yeah. ha- I have an idea. Uh, if, this, mm-hmm. if, this, if this if this it's um so an airport security thing that uh, has been happening a lot more is robots going around that are meant to deter people from loitering and hanging around. And I think um, Tessa would have made like a little frame that goes over the robots that makes them little beverage carts in an, in unintentionally so they're like coming around with like drinks and things like that that the like it's just set up so it's right outside the camera view so that people getting the data don't like see the change like the modification yes um, but like basically taking these like super like rude and, and and it's not even just airports like it's all sorts of places that have done like security public um, spaces public spaces yeah so um yeah, it could be something closer, like a local park or a shopping center or something like that. Where love it, um, and yeah, and then so basically, Nash would have hacked the the robots into it. I think so. It sounds wow. great. All about it, and then Karen. Mm-hmm. I feel like so. I feel like Lido knows about uh, Nash's dubious past. Mm-hmm. Um, after like. I have an imagining that Nash probably talks too much, especially and, compared and to Lido. Lido. Lido is a great listener yeah. uh, in that he is very quiet and nods. And yeah. he's like, mm-hmm. and everyone's, you know, he does give like affirming, like I am actively listening, like feedback uh, just enough to, to keep you going. That's so good. That's yeah. Inter- intermittent reward, right? Yeah. I mean, he definitely is listening, but he doesn't talk enough to always uh, um, express that. That Agreed. people don't always read into it until he like feeds a little bit back and like repeats something back to you or says something affirming. Awesome. I love it. And I feel like that dubious past is framed heavily around misusing data. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Be that. Uh, like, I... I am pretty sure we were talking about everybody being youngins. I'm pretty sure that Nash just got kicked out of college. <laughs> I'm, like, um, as like the final, like went too far, was too incautious. 
about messing with data, manipulating um, how technology is being used on campus, sort of as an extension of some of the stuff around uh, Tessa's work about public spaces that aren't actually for everyone because only some people count in our world because, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I think messing with security feeds and algorithms about what robots are doing uh, when they're hustling people away. Uh, and I think that also Nash has done some very, very selfish things around rent, automating payment from somewhere at like, so I think there's a background there of theft. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just for yeah. some real bling, like some really kind of embarrassing, like when you're young and you have like, there's a pair of shoes in the corner that like, in, like of Nash is wherever Nash lives that are mm -hmm. too, too expensive for anyone to ever have afforded sort of deal. Like there's just every once in a while, there's those pieces or like they got thrown in the bin, like that kind of, nice. yeah. Embarrassing, petty, self-serving mm -hmm. stuff is sort of what I'm. How, how do you see these emissions coming out? Was it something that came out kind of like at at night in the dark when we're like cuddling together when we were close um, that you could say like almost feeling like you weren't really saying it? Was it something that you were more public about? Was it just like Lido being observant? I think it is a bit of I'm imagining it's while driving while mm. Lido's driving. Um, because everyone's looking that way. Uh, so there's that like, yeah. safety not looking at one another. Mm -hmm. uh, and Nash being very... Like, it took a long time to... Like, there were many versions of the story, and it took a mm -hmm. long time for the, the truest version, which is, like, she's ashamed and, like, ash like ashamed of these very selfish choices that have mm -hmm. come... Like, yeah, that... And it's like, like shared that, but also doesn't really want to ever talk about it, mm -hmm. but also will ally, ally to the matter. I, I, I feel like, uh, I mean, the driver has a lot of great moves, so I feel like one that would, that would be really good is borrowing one from um, Monster Hearts, the Sasquatch. Is it the Sasquatch? Where you're, you're so quiet and you make something so uncomfortably awkward that people just blurt out a truth about themselves. Yes. Like reveal a secret. <laughs> yes. There's something about, about that. And I feel like maybe that just happened is we had just a, like, a very long, quiet drive and Lido's just like enjoying the silence. And then suddenly Nash just starts talking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have you two. Enjoying the silence. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Yes. You don't. <laughs> I have two, I have two questions about, that um yeah. one of them is does Lido usually have music playing in his car or does he normally is he normally quiet inside he plays music when it's just him okay because i so think he's slightly person. embarrassed by his music choices okay. i don't know what those are but he definitely doesn't like sharing he likes enjoying his music alone yeah. <laughs> so when other people are there he doesn't play music cool and the second question is, and this is the sad one, is is after this revealing happened, is that when Lido and Nash sort of, when Lido started fading away from Nash, is that when Lido started ghosting after, after he heard this? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that that would okay. be a reason to ghost. I think he just ghosted because he felt like, okay, well, that was fun, but mm, yeah. Cool. I, feel like I need to detail my car. <laughs> yeah. But now, now I'm like really busy on my car, so. I'm sorry. Um, the, the two of you have both done like kind of illicit things. Like you used to steal cars, and mm -hmm. you, you've stolen shoes or you know object, you know goods or whatever. Yeah, so mm -hmm. maybe that's ethically fine to both of you to a certain degree. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It it totally didn't bother Lido to find find um, this out about about Nash. I think he was he was just 100 percent like okay, well that's a fact about you. That's true. Great. I think the the deep seated part of the shame is that who has the worst like uh, info security stuff are like nonprofits, mm, and so yeah. the source like who was stolen from it's not noble targets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, oh. as, as, a, as a freelance consultant, someone might have paid you to do that. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh that's nice. Yeah. Too. There we go. Yeah. That's good. Love it. Yeah. Um, I cool. think. That wraps up our backstory. It does. And we should probably, we're overdue. So we'll probably, <laughs> a quick break. Well, yeah. we took a long break, so I don't feel too bad about it. But yeah. uh, we should probably take a break and then come back in a little bit, if that's cool with everyone. Sounds great. Cool. Awesome. Once my machine responds, I'll totally kick that off. All mm -hmm. right, we'll see you all in five. Choo-choo.